Brian, you cover some of the coolest things to happen in the 60s with a distinctive magnolia spin to them, namely the Century 21 exposition and the British rock and roll invasion. So uh, thanks for joining us. And Thank you. I, yeah, I got to do a kid's eye view of the, fu of the fun stuff for Seattle in the 60s. And so, uh, you, were, you were there with that, that kid's eye view yourself. You lived there. I was there, and I try to bring some of that, uh, that fun to the two chapters I got to write. Well, I want to ask you just right off the bat, can you even imagine today if the World's Fair were in Fort Lawton? I actually tried to for the book. Yeah. And uh, I, I was just thinking about that uh, in their planning. They were uh, considering uh, uh, extending Alaska Way all the way around to Fort Lawton. Wow. And they would have taken out, or uh, Skip Hawkins and his Four Mile Rock would have been uh, history. <laughs> if they had. Now, I mean, now not Skip wouldn't have been, but his Four Mile Rock. Right around been. Four Mile Rock. <laughs> <laughs> People might have driven by, you know, and said, oh, look down at that, you know, kind of thing. I, it, would have, it, it would have changed Magnolia significantly back in. Oh, the absolutely. Early it would have. It would have probably wrecked Magnolia. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm sure in some ways. Yeah. Um, now, kids were involved in inviting people to the fair, Magnolia kids, and we've got this photo right. this from is, newspaper. Talk this about is a class that. from Briar Cliff, uh, writing, writing uh, le just like school kids all across Seattle, they were asked to write letters about a year before uh, the fair began. Uh, to invite relatives, uh, friend, family, friends uh, to come to Seattle to uh, uh, and maybe stay with them, uh, but definitely come to Seattle and uh, see this wild thing that was going on uh, in this corner of the country. Now, you, you just said this wild thing that was going on. Some people today may not really understand how the World's Fair just transformed Seattle and it, and it, it, it gripped us all back then. When we were kids, we knew, we knew the World's Fair was a big deal, perhaps the biggest deal we'd ever seen. Yeah, and, and, and they did it with, uh, uh, they had great marketing and uh, uh, they certainly, uh, the structures, they backed it up. It was uh, uh, wildly different. Uh, you go from, we had, okay, there we got Elvis. Well, had, I'm, I'm gonna skip go. forward because yeah, this is a visual manifestation of what you're talking about right now. Well, when I was a kid, we had the Smith in Seattle. All we had for a big structure was the Smith Tower. Right. Okay. And and then you look and you watch this this amazing structure going up in under a year. It goes boom. It it was it, they built it fast, and to see this thing going up, you can see from the right from the top of that torch is the top of Magnolia Bridge, and that's where we would go. As you as you drove down that bridge, you could watch the Space Needle grow just in real time almost. It, it went up fast. This picture, uh, it was started like in May of uh, 60, 61. They started the pour. Yeah. Uh, and this is probably January of 62. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, it's already practically done. They're finishing up here. It's just um, like night and day, difference between before the fair and after the fair. And you and see it those bizarre old buildings, that Coliseum down below uh, right. that we used to see. From, we'd go up on Queen Anne Hill and look down and watch that thing because there was a big fence around the whole uh, building. And structure. of course, at that time, kids from Magnolia who were high school age went to Queen Anne High School, which yep. looks down on that whole site and yep. uh, got to see it just take shape and uh, and it wasn't just the buildings um, as as this previous slide indicates um, it was who came to the fair and you cover this in the chapter as well oh, oh yeah and uh, it wasn't just uh, I mean we had everybody coming to the fair That's uh, right. I mean Seattle was on the map as being the place that any touring company that came to New York City also included Seattle in 1962 so we got everybody coming uh they would hit new york they would hit philadelphia and they would hit seattle that hadn't happened before and uh it was it was amazing and of course elvis came uh because he was making a movie that came out the right. year later that played the yeah. magnolia theater <laughs> yeah. 
Sure. So uh, you've got you've got an Elvis story in your chapter. I, I do, and you put that in the uh, it's in the uh, featured article where uh, uh, well, one young lady went out to uh, she cornered she cornered Elvis right out of his hotel room, and uh, her her goal her mission was to get Elvis to give uh, uh, an autograph to both uh, for herself, and she was going to get one for her sister. She wanted when two, she had the, two autographs. She yeah. Two autographs. She asked for two. Would you sign it twice, please? So Elvis obliged, but he flipped <laughs> the paper over and wrote it right in the middle on both sides. And so uh, uh, she was uh, faced with a real uh, problem as far as uh, who gets that autograph, uh, me or my sister. <laughs> they didn't have computer scanners back then. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us about your cousin's plan to foil the pickpockets when he came in from out of town. Okay. Yeah, my, my, my older cousin, Mark, uh, uh, he, he lived in Port Townsend. And one of those letters that was written, uh, my cousin showed up uh, at our house to go to the fair. Uh, and he had heard that there were lots of pickpockets. And so he had written a special letter to pickpockets and stuffed that into a, an old uh, wallet and then attempted to get his uh, pocket picked at the fair the day we went, uh, unsuccessfully, <laughs> but, uh, uh, and was very uh, upset that, that, we, that that day we just couldn't attract any pickpockets. You know, we're looking at a slide here about uh, the World's Fair trade dollars. And, you know, while, while I was reading the book, I, I realized that over on my desk, I was keeping a few of these actual trade dollars. And so, I have them with me. This 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 golden um, kind of a coin that was you worth dollar. But tell you me. helped fund the fair. That's you right. You helped by by keeping that trade dollar of those two or three. You and your family just paid uh, the Exposition Twenty One. Uh, uh, the Century Twenty One Exposition uh, got made three dollars off of you, <laughs> and that was the point. That was the coin of the realm uh, in the state, uh, right. uh, and especially uh, in Seattle during uh, 1962. The, uh, uh, they minted them. The, uh, uh, the legislature uh, uh, passed a, a law that said that uh, this was uh, legal tender in the state of Washington, anywhere in the state, uh -huh. as long as the merchants agreed to accept it, they would they would put signs in their windows and say, "Yes, we we accept trade dollars," because they knew at the end, if they were stuck with any of those, if they couldn't give them back to people in in uh, exchange, they could turn them in at the end of the in 1962 and get uh -huh. a dollar back. Well, and they were so they were minted. Uh, you know, uh, millions of them were minted, and uh, they were used in stores. Uh, the store would helped fund by, by giving real legal money to, uh, to the fair uh, uh, promoters. And then they would accept these, these dollars and then desperately try to give them off to all the tourists and all the people uh, you know, in, as change for any transaction that they had. And they were quite successful. Uh, I put in the book that, uh, and there were lots of different ways to make money or, or spend money for the fair, but the fair uh, uh, made for Seattle made about half a million dollars. They they ended in the in the black, uh, which <laughs> you world's fairs normally don't do. Uh, although lots of people benefit from the bringing in all the people coming, but uh, our fair made about half a million, and they actually made about half a million on trade dollars. 